Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. My friends and I always tune into the Todd Levitt Law Show. Todd is entertaining, informative, and always delivers the goods. Todd might not tell you what you want to hear, but he's going to tell you what you need to hear. And all you got to do is listen. Hold on, Todd. Don't let go. It's time for the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting and podcasting in the middle of Minton in the Black Diamond Group Mothership in a beautiful green nutrient field with my good friend. He's America's favorite nug, now trademarked, by the way, folks. <laughs> Craig Russell, the muscle, the hustle. Craig, the water's wet, the sky is blue, and we love to smoke you. Coming in at 42%. How you doing, Craig? 42%? What? We... we yeah, we, we've improved the genetics. Oh, my God. Uh, and uh, you're now coming in at a whopping 42%. Wasn't I like 34% just last week? You were, but you've improved. Wow. Yeah, new and, the new and improved American. It had to do with the diet. nutrients, the lighting, guess, uh, just man. the overall care of your strain. What about the uh, weather here in Michigan? Because it has been gorgeous this past week. You know that last week we had a bunch of rain and it was cold. This week it has been beautiful. It has been just stunning. Just stunning. And for all of the single track shredders out there, any anyone and everyone that enjoys the outdoors, which is basically everyone, uh, what a gr- great weather. Depending on where you are in the country, if you can have the outdoors to enjoy, at least here in Michigan, you know, they just came out with a list of the uh, top 10 beer cities in the in the United States. Guess where, you know, what, what would you think of when you think of beer city in Michigan? Where do you think? What do you, what city? Grand Rapids, right Founders. Off the, Grand Rapids, beer city. You know where beer, where Grand Rapids came in on this list? Yes. 17th. I did not know that. They think there's 16 better beer cities than Grand Rapids. I had to throw that list away because that's not an accurate list. I was going to say Mount Pleasant, Michigan, based on my own experience dating back to the 80s with 30 (laughs) keg parties. That's what I was going for. I think it's a different kind of beer they're talking about. (laughs) I don't think think they're counting Natty Ice Light as uh, as part of that. Or what was the the 80s beer? Skunk beer. Three-day-old skunk beer just lying around the fraternity house. And then, you know, you're opening up a cold one, and after three three or four, you know, you're just picking up any any <laughs> cup that's just lying around, hoping that it's not chew or dip Ew. or a spittoon. Ew. Oh, hey, this is a family a, show. A lot yes, of folks out is. there are probably yes. eating breakfast, lunch, or dinner, right? But Something. hey, Craig, we we have a huge show. We have yes, a, we do. an extremely special guest coming on the show. But before we bring attorney Mike Camorn on, one of my dear friends, 
We opened up the show with who today, Craig? Well, we opened up the show with the doors, riders on the storm, kind of a little chill thing for today, for this morning. As usual, though, even though we opened up the show with the doors, there's probably another song you wish we would have opened the show up with. What was the song we wanted to open the show with? Well, since attorney Michael Camorn is on the show today with us to talk about everything that he does at Camorn Law, and the Canna Jam coming up here on October 9th. I thought it would be appropriate to play a song by the Doobie Brothers. Let's just call it the Doobie song. The Doobie. And uh, it's a great, it's a classic. It is. Old Black Water, Keep On Rolling. Rolling, Mississippi Moon, Won't You Keep On Shining On Me. Now, who sings that song, Todd? The Doobie yes. Brothers. Let's, let's keep it that way. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Mississippi, she's calling my name. Catfish, you're jumping that paddle wheel, bumping black water, keep rolling all fast, just the same. Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on? Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on? Oh, black water. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Yeah, keep on shining in your life. Gonna make everything great. Mama gonna make everything all right. Yeah, no, I, we don't sing. We, we've made that very clear that you and I won't, will not even do karaoke. We try not to. We try no, we not don't. to. But the Doobie. Canna Jam, we're going to be singing and hanging out the Canna Jam. We'll be yes. talking about that shortly. Yes. Doobie Brothers, you know, they were supposed to play in Detroit uh, a couple months ago, and uh, they ended up, a couple of the members of the band got uh, the coronavirus, so they, they had to postpone their show until next summer, next 4th of July at uh, Pine Knob, which is also known as DTE, but everybody calls it Pine Knob still. Uh, that's when you can see the Doobie Brothers with Michael McDonald. They're doing a 50th anniversary tour of the Doobies with Michael McDonald, so next 4th of July, you'll be able to see that. Time to get our special guest on, the one, the only, Michael Kamorn! Yay! Hey. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate you inviting me on the show. Enjoy it uh, for my own listening pleasure, and always good to be a guest. Yeah, Mike, the Doobie Brothers. I mean, you and I grew up in Metro D. I, I, I think Craig grew up in South, kind of just South Central Michigan, Craig? Southwestern Michigan, Kalamazoo. South, oh, there you go, Kazoo. But uh, that was a great, I mean, I recall that song from the 70s, going on to Babalo Boat to Babalo Island, Mike, and listening to the Doobie Brothers. Bob, that's a flashback, Todd. I got to tell you, the uh, memories of Bobo Island go way, way back. And uh, they are a great band. They do have a lot of uh, cannabis themes. And in fact, I think their whole story was, uh, how, you know, when they asked, how did you guys get your name together? Their answer was like, we were just a bunch of brothers that like doobies. <laughs> or something like that. That was, that was the answer I remember hearing. But uh, It's, yes, it's probably the truth. But uh, if you are just tuning in for the first time, uh, attorney Mike Camorn, good friend of mine, one of my closest friends. We grew up together. I went to law school at the same time together. I started practicing law together at the same time. And, you know, I consider you, Mike, to be, you know, family. We're very close friends. And um, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. But can you tell the listeners before we get to uh, the, the Canna Jam a little bit about your, you know, your law firm and where you're located and what kind of law you practice? Sure. I, uh, my law firm, Camorn Law PLLC, is uh, is uh, located in Farmington Hills, Michigan, in Oakland County. Uh, CamornLaw.com is our website. The practice uh, has evolved over the years. I started out doing mostly uh, criminal defense. I got involved with uh, representing caregivers and patients and found myself representing people in criminal cases and some local issues regarding uh, zoning and whatnot. And uh, that evolved, of course, into a bunch of other things, uh, including federal lawsuits against the crime lab and uh, lawsuits against CPS in federal court, trying to enjoin them from some of their practices of removing children because of cannabis use. And uh, all of that was a large part of what we were doing. And then, of course, they legalized uh, cannabis. And now my practice has evolved into doing a lot of business work, licensing, uh, advising businesses in the cannabis space. And uh, we're still doing some criminal defense. I got some federal uh, federal criminal cases, but uh, it's been uh, it's 
been a lot of fun. It's been evolving, and like uh, most professions, you got to kind of have to reinvent yourself as things uh, change and move forward. And and uh, we've got uh, two lawyers that work there. I got three or four people that are my staff, and um, you know we're, we're we're here to please and uh, service those that need these kind of services. You do a great job. I refer clients down to Mike's law firm on a regular basis when we field calls for individuals looking to enter into the cannabis industry on a multitude of levels. And we, we always, always refer individuals down to Camorn Law, my good friend Mike Camorn out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. Mike's been on the show before. You have your own podcast or podcast as well, correct, Mike? That's true. Uh, in fact, uh, working on the Canada Gym event, I re-engaged with a friend of mine from a long time ago that started me with the uh, podcast, which is Planted Green Trees. And I reminded him that my wife still uh, mentions his name in vain every Thursday night because I'm not home. And this has been going on for like 10 years. You know, we, we've got, I think we're on episode number, I don't know, 530 something. So uh, a lot of it is the a lot of it's a, a library of week after week of the evolution of the MMA as it rolled out from 2008 to 2009 out of the stories cases people that were involved we had legislators I, I, I was recently looking at a podcast with uh, Gretchen Whitmer when she was a legislature in the Senate or she was uh, you know in the Senate um, and uh, I also recall having this guy, Lester Grimspoon, who was a Harvard professor and wrote Marijuana Revisited in 1974 and was the most outspoken about medical cannabis, you know, in the 70s when it was taboo to even mention it. And uh, also told this great story about uh, smoking cannabis with John Lennon and Bob Dylan and whatnot. But uh, we've done a lot of shows. It's, uh, it's hard because the topics are always uh, challenging as we move forward. But... Um, it's, uh, it might have a chance of competing with the Ted Levitt show. I'm not sure, though. It's uh, still... It's well, still a- well, we claim to have at least 20 listeners, uh, 15 oh. Amish, good friends of ours, the Amish, and family. So right. if we're growing, that, that's outstanding. But, Mike... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Craig, you concur with that, right? Of course. Jebediah and uh, Aloysius are listening right now as we speak. So there Actually, we go. I, I, I mean, you know this because I've, I've spoken about this on previous shows. Uh, I'm actually friends with uh, a number of Amish families in separate Amish communities throughout uh, central northern Michigan. And they're just some great, great people. I mean, from top to bottom, great folks in the Amish community there. But Mike, um, we're so stoked to have you on the show. Attorney Mike Camorn, if you're just turning in for the first time, in the mothership with Craig and myself. Mike, you are uh, putting on the Canna Jam taking place Saturday, October 9th, 2021, Riverside Park, Ipsy, Michigan, right down the road from the big house there, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we're just stoked to have you on the show to talk about it. Well, I appreciate you taking an interest in it, and it's been a long road for us to even conceptualize something like this. But uh, we are excited about it. I, I, I may, I may do a podcast on Planet Green Trees about the transition from being a lawyer to an event planner. That's a whole other series of issues. And uh, you know, now that I speak in terms of uh, event organizer, I would remind myself it's all about the next event. You know, that's how that's how you know they talk. But Canada Jam is a, we're excited about it. It's a state licensed event. I had obtained a marijuana event organizer license back in 2019. Of course, that year, the year following was no events are allowed. You will be locked down, and uh, and the opportunity came about um, as the uh, State opened up, and uh, even though there was other events planned at uh, the location, which is Riverside Park um, on Cross Street in Ypsilanti, for example, the Beer Fest is usually in July. They have that there. They, they canceled. But we scheduled this for October the 9th, and it was far enough out, and the city was uh, fine with uh, opening the park up. And I would say the city of Ypsilanti has been fantastic. They were, uh, they were encouraging to us, and they've been very, very cooperative with letting us set up this park, this huge park, Riverside Park, which probably could field 7,500 people, um, letting us have our way with the park. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got like Friday is the setup day, Saturday is the all-day c- concert and festival, and Sunday is the break everything down. But 
The reason why we're excited about it is because um, there has not been a lot of these. I can't say we're the first. We're probably the first in the metro Detroit area, the three counties that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's a lot of population there, Oakland County, Macomb, and uh, Wayne County, uh, even though this is going to be Washington County. Uh, but there's a, you know, reach to those kind of people that may not have made it to the, there's the other ones that I think there's a couple of Niles and other parts of the state. But this event will be a licensed, state licensed uh, cannabis event whereby cannabis sales and cannabis use will be authorized by the state of Michigan. And uh, in doing so, we have secured four retail vendors uh, in the recreational market to uh, come to the location. Those uh, vendors are Botanical Company, Sticky Yipsy, uh, can uh, Oz Cannabis, and Pure Lapeer. Pure Lapeer is actually owned by a lawyer friend of ours, uh, Mike Bohora, and uh, Sticky Yipsy and uh, Oz Cannabis happen to be in Ypsilanti, and uh, my other friend, Jamie Lowell, is associated with the Botanical Company, and uh, they're going to be there as well. In addition to that, as if that's not enough, and another, other reasons to attend is going to be because of the entertainment. Now, I'll tell you that I'm billing this as the, the inaugural uh, comedy festival, Canna Jam. And uh, my real vision is to, is to return next year and have it be a three-day event or two-day event focusing on comedy. I, w I would like, like the Sundance Film Festival, the Cannes Film Festival. I'm hoping this Ypsilanti site will be a comedy festival where the art of comedy will be... Uh, represented and people will come from all over and comedians will come from all over to play to the crowd in Ypsilanti, which would probably be one of the better crowds they'd play to. So in addition, so we, so in terms of the comedy piece, a friend of mine from Southfield, who I grew up with, a couple years younger than me, but clearly the class clown, is this uh, co comic named Mike Young. He's uh, famous for a movie he did, uh, Who the F is Mike Young? And he's currently in... Uh, Michigan or has been filming a movie that he wrote and is directing that's being financed by uh, Dan Gilbert. So that's going to be coming out at the end of the year. That's called uh, Stealing Jokes. And uh, Mike Young is the, uh, he wrote it and he's starring in it. And we all so know who, I mean, maybe not all of us, but Dan Gilbert being Quicken Loans and Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers and an entrepreneur and uh, investor and I mean, just he's done so much, Dan Gilbert, for Michigan, uh, city of Detroit, and and even beyond in other states across the country. He he, he that's that's awesome. But hey, Mike, um, we have to go to break. When we come back from break, we're going to continue speaking to attorney Mike Camorn from Camorn Law, Farmington Hills, Michigan, folks. If you or someone you know needs an attorney, criminal defense or you're looking to enter into the cannabis industry, or you are in the cannabis industry and you're looking for the best legal representation, call my good friend Mike Camorn, CamornLaw.com. How can they call your office, Mike? Can you give out the phone number? Sure. 248-357-2550. That's 248-357-2550. Fantastic. We'll, we'll be right back, Craig. I'm assuming we have to go to break. Is that why... You are doing calisthenics and aerobics right there, Craig? That's exactly why I am. We'll be right back. Shining on me. Yeah, keep on shining your light. Gonna make everything great. Mama gonna make everything alright. 
Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Coming back strong, Craig. You pulled that one out on me. I thought we were going to come back with the doors. Black Water by the Doobie Brothers. Great choice, Craig, especially uh, with our special guest in the mothership, attorney Mike Camorn here today, talking about Canna Jam. Well, that's what I was going to say. We're, t- we're talking to Mike Camorn here, so we've got to bring, bring back the Doobie Brothers. I love the story you were telling Mike about how they got their name. Well, no wonder. The Doobie Brothers. It makes total sense. The Doobie the Brothers. Doobie. I'm so stoked to have Mike here in the studio, too. Mike, it's always good to see you, my friend. It's, it's truly... Just uh, always love having you on the show. I mean, you and I talk on a regular basis when we're not in the studio. But uh, so Canada Jam, Mike, is coming. It's not coming. It's, it's literally coming Saturday, October 9th, 2021, Riverside Park, Ypsilanti, Michigan. For those listening around the globe, because the show is downloaded for some reason in 50 countries, check it out at CanajamFest.com. That's Canna, C-A-N-N-A, Jam, Fest f-e-s-t dot com for all the information uh, an amazing lineup of cannabis providers from sticky to uh would you say the the botanical company pure lapeer grow i mean you know who else is coming mike uh, oz cannabis oz, oz cannabis. cannabis great brand great company and uh this other cultivation company called pure relief is our platinum sponsor and um, the owner of that is a guy named Tom Beller, who is also the lead singer of the headlining band, which is Echoes of Pink Floyd. And uh, they were kind enough to uh, participate in exchange for a, you know the platinum sponsorship. And it was a great deal. And I can't say enough about Tom, who's the uh, who's a license holder, but also the uh, leader of the Pink Floyd. Echoes of Pink Floyd uh, cover band, and they will be playing from uh, about seven o'clock to ten o'clock with a laser light show, uh, finishing off the event. And we're—I can't tell you how excited I am to have them. I mean, it sounds cliche, and uh, <laughs> you know, but but if you had to say who do you want at the event, yeah. you know, it's Pink Floyd, right? And, and a light show, you know, bring a light, a light show, show. Right. A light show. But the thing is, I got to tell you, like Tom and his crew were like. They called, you know, like we reached out and like, we have to be there. Like, that's our, that's our event. You know, they, so I, 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 I've come to love Tom as like a brother also. And uh, I just. I got a question for you, Mike. Yes. Can, you know, I'm coming to the event. I'll be there. You know, so the entire group will be there. Absolutely supporting you. Can I, can I stop by the day prior and can we sit down and, and uh, enjoy the strain of the show and watch Dark Side of the Moon? Is that possible before we uh, attend the event? We can for sure, and I will tell you that, jokingly, me and Tom Dark Side of Oz. I meant to say, excuse me, Dark Side of Oz, the uh, you know the Pink Floyd album with the Wizard of Oz playing on the big TV screen. There, listen, we talked about that. These, you know, you can imagine that the guys that are the echoes of Pink Floyd, they know all of the Pink Floyd, you know, history, conspiracy theories, etc. So when I brought that up, he's like, "We can do that. We've done that before. We'll play Dark Side of the Moon from beginning to end with the Wizard of Oz playing in the background." They, but they, you also have, as you mentioned in the last segment, comedian Mike Young. What about Randy Kaplan? He's going to be there, correct? Randy Kaplan is going to be there. He's uh, he's an interesting guy. He's a very talented recording artist, and he uh, has had a lot of uh, popularity, and he's on radio stations in particular, like all the kids' Sirius XM stuff. And what he does is he's like, he'll, he'll play... Uh, Kid, he'll create kids lyrics and play them to like Robert Johnson or you know Maroon 5 or whatever the hot song is and uh, he's you know he's a very so but he's not bringing the kids stuff he's gonna he's gonna do a couple of Bob Dylan uh, you know cover uh, cover songs and, and things of that theme but uh, he's a talented guy um, he actually as a as a joke for for me he, he actually wrote a song called the Camorn song which is on his album and kind of funny and sticky, but uh, I gotta play tough. that, Craig. We have to play the Camorra. Yeah, we gotta song. find that. We gotta find that. Hey, That's by the way, be. Mike, we, we usually have a strain of the of the week. Uh, can you provide us with a strain of the week, strain of the show? I, I can try to do that, and I'm gonna go old, old school, and I'm old go school, old Michigan, uh, Michigan uh, centered, which is the Monkey Paw. Um, this is. Uh, 
you know, it's kind of a, there's a couple that come to mind. Like we, 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 I think I passed on a Pink County Paralyzer, but there was a time when there was not a lot of strains that existed uh, from what I heard back in the college days. And uh, Monkey Paw was one that I, I'd heard about and even observed maybe some kind of weird uh, bud. It had some kind of altered bud, didn't look like the traditional bud. But, the, but my uh, reason for naming it is I later met a person named Monkey Paw who had been <laughs> a cannabis uh, enthusiast his entire life. He looked like Monkey Paw and uh, was the most kind-hearted, sweet, gentle hippie you've ever met. I think he'd been, he'd been in federal prison for a little while on some marijuana charges, and I got to know him. He was one of the guys uh, that was part of the moonshine uh, oil makers, you know, the, the, the ones that were so committed to trying to get cannabis, Rick Simpson oil, to patients, and they would, uh, I believe they did things like drove around and picked up trim from all the caregivers that would try to make oil for cancer patients and provide them some kind of medicine, but... For that reason, and uh, it's old school Michigan uh, roots, I would choose the monkey paw. Fantastic. Great choice. Hey, by the way, Mike, uh, we've talked about this. It, it would be awesome if we could bring, you know, Canna Jam 2.0 up here to uh, mid-Michigan. Uh, and that would just be outstanding. We have plenty of space and people who are connoisseurs. Uh, I know a, a number of other amazing individuals and companies that we can uh, speak with who would uh, come aboard to provide, you know, all the products and services to the public. Uh, but we should definitely uh, bring Canna Jam here to uh, Central Michigan sometime in 2022. Listen, as I look at my calendar and it says October the 9th, Canna Jam in Ypsilanti, I have October 11th, Monday, phone call with Todd Levitt to schedule. <laughs> I love it. The Mountain Canna Jam. The Mountain Canna Jam. Like I said, I know a lot of great companies in mid-Michigan, people, individuals who would love to participate along with our group in the Canna Jam and, and the surrounding communities. But uh, folks, uh, Canna Jam, Canna, Canna, Canna Jam Fest, too much monkey paw, CannaJamFest.com, October 9th, 2021. Mike Camorn, attorney at law in the studio, also the best at what he does as an attorney. How much is it to attend, and how do people, when you go online, how do they, I mean, I'm, I already looked online, it's amazing, but how, how does somebody go about getting the can of jam, Mike? Sure, the general admission tickets are $30, and we have VIP tickets for $150, although we have all kinds of discounts. If you're a student, you get a $10 off, and... Uh, and we have other discounts available for the VIP if people are interested. Um, the Eventbrite, Eventbrite and, uh, is, is where you can buy tickets. Um, the various um, vendors, retailers also are serving as ticket outlets. In other words, if you go into these stores, you know, they, they, they'll remind you, hey, we're going to be at uh, Canna Jam on October 9th. And if you want to buy a ticket, we can give you a, a code. Um, there is a website, canajamfest.com, where we have all the information about uh, who's going to be at the location, who the other vendors are, what food trucks are going to be there. I didn't mention, but uh, one of the other entertainments is Darren McCarty, four-time uh, Stanley Cup champion, and his comedy slapstick tour. And uh, so we've got a whole bio about him and the other artists. We're hoping to have on the canajamfest.com uh, site also the vendors' selections that they would be bringing so people that are interested can get a little uh, view of what kind of flavors were going to be there and what they may want to consider sampling, testing, buying, or being interested in. But um, Eventbrite, if you search Canna Jam or if you go to CannaJamFest.com or even call our office if you're interested, 248-357-2550, we can connect you with a discount if you want or if you've got a group of people you want to bring we're happy to give out that number one more time mike 248-357-2550 we can assist you with uh your ticket purchasing pleasures and uh or or if you're in the need of outstanding legal representation i've been practicing criminal defense license restoration for 28 years and uh mike camorn camorn law is my go-to guy uh, when I refer individuals who contact Levitt Law Firm 
for those seeking to enter into the Michigan cannabis industry and for some uh, defense work as well, criminal defense work outside of my wheelhouse and other areas of the state of Michigan. Hey, Mike, there was a few individuals who I mentioned that you were coming on the show, and we did have a colleague of ours on over the past couple of weeks who spoke about uh, some of the legislation that uh, was being stirred up in the Michigan uh, you know, House of Representatives in regards to caregivers. So when we come back from break, uh, can, you, can you give us your opinion of whether you see that bill going anywhere? I'd be happy to. All right, Craig, take us out. Mississippi, she's calling my name. Catfish are jumping, that paddle wheel bumping. Black water keep rolling, all fast just the same. Oh, black water keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Yeah, keep on shining your light. Gonna make everything great. Mama gonna make everything all right. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Turn it and burn it again with the Doobie Brothers and uh, Old Black Water. Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. We have a special guest. Moon. Yes, and it's it's a Todd Levitt singing. <laughs> That's our special guest. <laughs> I know we have special guest Mike Camorn, attorney at law. Mike Camorn is here talking about Canada Jam Fest, which is happening next weekend in Ypsilanti. I got to ask you a question, Mike. I know Todd wanted to talk to you about some legislation stuff, but um, are you? I know you want this to be a big comedy fest. You know, there, there, there's a whole marijuana, cannabis themed set of comedians out there who that's their whole story. You know, Seth Rogen, Doug Benson, a lot of guys. I, did you find that finding? comedians to play at the event was going to be really tough when you told them, hey, you know what? You could probably smoke on stage while you're doing your act. I'm sure that probably led some people to want to come and be a part of it. It did. And I, uh, I, you know, I'd been talking to Mike Young for a long time and he liked the, you know, he's out there in Hollywood and he's pitching ideas and stuff. So he was like making fun of me when I pitched him the ideas. Like, this is what (laughs) I do, you know. But, um, you know, when he signed on and he was going to be the headliner, you know, I wasn't trying to, you know, up him. But I'm hoping that as he goes out in the world and tours as a comedian, and he does this frequently with Bob Saget, and I would say he's in the orbit of people like Bill Burr and, you know, uh, Kirshner and uh, Sagu or whatever those guys' names are. And, uh, you know, I figure he's going to go out and talk to other comedians and tell them what a great uh, audience they are, and we're going to get all those people for next year or maybe even in uh, the the spring-summer when we're up in the... uh, in your guys' neck of the woods, I would think any kind of comedian That'd be great. you tell him, I would tell you tell a comedian, hey, guess what? You can smoke on stage. They're going to be all for it. I think half of them do their shows high to begin with, so I think they'll be. I think it's a built-in audience. I think. I hope so, and I hope it. You know, I, I think it's also, you know, an interesting factor about this with the getting of the insurance, and you know, it, it, oftentimes events uh, premiums are driven by. The music that you're going to have, like if you're going to have metal or rap, the fees are more for the premium. So I was concerned about that. But the uh, and this really goes to the point I'm trying to make about the comedians is that the audience, when there's no alcohol involved and it's just cannabis, is a different audience. Sure. There's less likely to be fights. There's less, you know, I I, I even say you're not going to see vomiting like you might see at a concert or a festival. Someone said head too much. Misogyny is probably less or or, or non-existent. Just people aren't just, you know, pounding their chest kind of ego that goes along with alcohol uh, and, you know, no fighting. So I think that, you know, take some of those things away. It's a much friendlier audience for a comedian. You know, they, they like to have like minded, less uh, aggressive. And um, I think you remove some of those things when you, you take the alcohol out of it and, and provide a safer choice with uh, cannabis. Totally agree. Couldn't agree more. Todd, you were talking about uh, we had, when we had Denise on a couple of weeks ago, talking about some of the legislature stuff happening in the state of Michigan. What was it you were going to ask Mike about? Well, for years, you know, caregivers have fought the good fight. They provide, you know, so much medicine and care for those in, in need as the laws change. And 
we always field questions at our office, phone calls, which we always refer to Mike's firm, uh, whether or not the caregivers are going to be, you know, shut out of the state of Michigan eventually now with all the recreational laws. And so there was a bill introduced. I think there was only three at the time when we had Denise on the show that were backing it or signed on to it. And um, so somebody that I know wanted me to ask Mike what his thoughts were if he saw this going anywhere. Sure. I think it's, it's, I think it's House Bill 30, 5301, and the reference you made that there's two other, they're, they're what they call tie barred. So the idea is that all three have to pass if any one of those three does not, none of them pass. But it is, an, it is a, they are proposed legislation to amend the MMMA. Now, the context of this is interesting because on October 11th, the recreational law known as MRTMA or the Michigan's, uh, Mar- 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 Michigan's Regulating Tax Marijuana Like Alcohol has an amendment that is going into effect. You may have heard the uh, legislature already acted to amend the, the recreational law in that they uh, have redefined marijuana. I would say not for the better. Uh, we've come a long way with what the definition of marijuana was and the hemp legislation by the federal government and its adoption by Michigan originally in the MRTMA, you know, took marijuana as we formerly knew it out of the public health code and out of the Controlled Substances Act. Well, this legislation that's going to affect um, on October 11th puts marijuana back into the crime code, okay? But the reason why they did it is, is the point I'm trying to make here, which is that they did it because they wanted to make sure that Delta 8 and Delta 10, this new, uh, this new piece of the uh, CBD, comes out of CBD production out of the hemp plant, was something that might create, uh, you know, psychoactive effects on people. So the legislature acted and passed laws so that if, if anyone's going to sell Delta 8 or Delta 10, it has to be in a retail licensed store. Now, that is, that had something to do with, you know, those two chemicals, but you can understand what the mindset is here of what is evolving. When, when, when uh, that law was passed, it can, can't be said to be anything other than the industry and the licensed operators want to have those things to sell, and nobody else should be allowed to do it because we want that tax dollars, so says the industry, right? And that messaging that got that law passed was done unequivocally by industry, you know, or uh, groups that represent the uh, industry. There's two main groups. One is the... Uh, Cannabis Manufacturing Association. The other one is the Cannabis Industry Association. They uh, each have different perspectives of how the implementation of the uh, tax and regulate recreational law is supposed to go. But I would say that that passing of the legislation and what would seem to be a grab of those two substances is a sign of things to come. Now, addressing the re- the uh, issues of the amendments to the MMMA, you know, I... Um, you can understand why this is happening. I mean, you can understand in the context of, you know, when they passed the Medical Licensing Act, they already, at that time, they had 45,000 caregivers for 300,000 patients uh, supplying, supplied by that source. And they said, we're not going to use you. And they created these new licenses, the 1,500 plant grow, it's the 1,000 plant grow. They said, we don't want that to be the source for the patients, okay? So that was a, that was a sign of things to come, you would think, then. And Some could argue that we're surprised the caregivers have lasted this long, if at all, right? But um, what we also know, which was strange and unusual, was that after they unleashed this program with the intention of not having the caregivers participate, they realized that they weren't going to be able to supply the medical market, uh, licensed market, without, because they didn't give out any grow license. So they said, hey, caregivers who we've been treating terribly and we've cut you out, we're going to let you now supply the medical market. And even after doing that and arguably saving the Medical Licensing Facilities Act and the rollout of the program, they cut that off and they were no more. Some would have said, we're surprised they made it that far. And then the recreational law passed and, um, and there are licenses, one could argue, that are, are made to incentivize caregivers to come from out of their basement and into a facility that they can be audited, they get a license, there's a seed to sell tracking with a metric. Um, and it has good intentions, maybe one could say, but the problem is that most cities, most townships, villages have not opted in, and there aren't 
affordable real estate or inventory to move into. So that has been a if that had gone differently, the concerns that that these bills raised may not be as great. But with all of that being said, knowing that this other law passed, which is a grab to get more retail sales, more products that the industry could sell that an unlicensed person couldn't sell the the Delta eight and Delta 10. That's what's happening here. And it's it's a it's it's really unfortunate because the amount of the amount of caregivers that supply patients is literally 75 70 let's see what is it 75,000 patients amongst the 275,000 use caregivers okay that means that of the 275 patients only a small portion of them use caregivers it's not like there's a huge market that the industry is losing out on right but their arguments from the industry side is that there is uh, gray market activity going on. Um, and with that being said, we know and have heard that a lot of the cities are trying to ban locally uh, and write ordinances, zoning ordinances, precluding caregiving. So I, I know I've been rambling on a little bit, but the point of these bills is that there should be concern because the momentum of the state of affairs has been, from my perspective, and especially the MRA, in the direction of empowering this concept of tax and regulate, okay? The MRA is really tasked with what does tax and regulate mean? How is it going to be regulated? How are we going to tax it? And what are the rules going to be? Well, this is the situation that the state of Michigan finds itself in. There's $110 million in sales He's a- every single month, okay? $110 million. That's a that's a billion dollars or more a year. The uh, MRA, that agency, is like a top five of the Forbes state agencies in the country, probably. You know what I mean? So when you ask the question, like, where is the direction of all this going to go? Just based on the money, the follow the money, it's going to go in the direction that empowers this $110 million a month program and all things that are legislated are going to be to make that thing work, function, and continue in the direction it's going. You know, the windfall that Michigan is receiving, having no dollars and then $110 million that, that is taxed or, you know, revenues that are created is a phenomena that, uh, you know, is, is something that even if the legislatures don't know anything about cannabis, they are signing on to and... Uh, know what the dollars are producing, and they don't care about the history, they don't care about the caregiver. That's a simple, unethical, amoral decision that's being made based on tax and regulate. It's tragic, it's unfortunate, and uh, the MMA is meaningful. It serves a great purpose for a lot of patients that could never afford or would never be able to afford to go to a dispensary and buy cannabis. I hope they don't have to remove the rights that already exist at the end of the day. But I do have concerns, and I think this is the direction that uh, the state uh, desires to go. And I think they're unfortunately at the whim of the industry, quote unquote, stakeholders that are that have become so empowered and are creating so much revenue for the state that they are calling all the shots. It's always got something to do with the money, doesn't it? Yep. Always. Nobody can explain it better, though, than attorney Mike Moore, my good yeah. friend. And, uh, you know, it's just very compelling. I mean, just listening to everything he is saying. And it's it's so on point and, and makes so much sense and, when you and, look back on everything. And you can hear the passion in his voice about it. You can tell, Mike, this is something you care about. Yep. Well, you know, it's an interesting I've been in a little, you know, it's an interesting scenario because we all voted for tax and regulate. Even the caregivers voted for tax and regulate. You know what I mean? And um, I think, you know, the question of where does it go is being driven, as I said, by the industry leaders because they are, you know, pumping the money into it. But I, my struggle is that I've always, you know, sided with the caregivers, the little guy, you know, and I have an innate uh, opposition to the big business takeover. From an economic position, too, I think the mom and pop businesses are important for the economy. You know, I don't think that, you know, running four mom and pop businesses out for one big company is necessarily the way yeah because Um, that big company is going to find a way to skirt around by paying the taxes as we've determined and discovered in the past few years those big companies figure out ways to get around and so then they it's a big money grab for them and mom and pa's get shut out 
There's so much truth to that. There's stories of when Walmart comes to town and the city, you know, grants them a license and all the mom pop stores shut down. And three years later, they come back and say, we're going to pay half the amount of taxes. What do you think about that? And they, they yeah. own the city now, you know, same kind of thing. But uh, I come, you know, I come down on that side and it's, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, we've gotten here. You know, the most interesting thing is that, you know, Todd has Todd said cases. We've talked about these. He's done, he's just driving and he's, he fights these battles with the DLAD that they still haven't destigmatized medical cannabis or still not returning licenses. I know that's a remaining social issue. But, um, you know, the, the MMMA uh, has been criticized. It's been called a lot of things. You know, police don't like it. Judges don't like it. Prosecutors don't like it. But it is sustained. It has significant meaning and protections for people that are, you know, acting as, as caregivers. And... Uh, and with all that being said, there's a lot of people that were brought into the criminal justice system. But time and time again, the Supreme Court corrected and fixed and created and, you know, and implemented the intention of the people. And it's interesting that for 12 years, the community, the cannabis community that we would know, the ad- advocates, lawyers and activists have been able to fight off any, any significant changes that would be detrimental to the act. And now, after legalization, it's from within the cannabis community, the other people there that are not this industry that have the power and money to eradicate, you know, these these fundamental uh, protections and, and uh, you know volume amounts, the amount of plants that you can have, and then they can get a bill like that into uh, you know uh, into into a voting situation. Makes you wonder if that was the plan all along, doesn't it? You know, the writing was probably on the wall from other states, you know what I mean? And, and there's always that issue of how, how, how big does the industry come and what happens to the existing. But, um, but you know, there's, I don't know, it, 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 I think that, um, you know, it, it's, I think the hardest thing that the state can't wrap its brain around is that you can't control the cannabis economy. It's impossible. Because before there was a cannabis economy that they were taxing, there was a cannabis economy. And if they think that, the, you know, whatever they're getting, they can get more and stop that, I disagree. And I think if they continue in that direction, you know, the tax and regulate is going to become the new prohibition. That's, what, that's what's inevitably going to happen. And the further the barriers are for people to get into the market, the higher the barrier, it doesn't mean they're not going to be caregivers. It doesn't mean they're not going to grow cannabis. It doesn't mean... If, I, if someone doesn't have a dispensary in their town, it doesn't mean they're going to be able to, you know, not be able to get cannabis. It's just, it's not something that you can control. So I think the approach overall is not going to fare well. I think fair market, open market, let competition drive it, let more people in, don't make it so difficult. And we will get to, you know, a, a more uh, equalized, um, democratic version of what tax and regulate should be. And more people will be participating. That's attorney Mike Camorn on the Todd Elliott Law Show. we got to take a break. We will wrap the show back up in just a second. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Hey, Craig, Canna Jam, Saturday, October 9, 2021, CannaJamFest.com, taking place next Saturday, Riverside Park, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Everybody needs to get down to Ipsy, Craig. I agree, and Attorney Mike Camorn is uh, the man with the plan uh, doing Canna Jam. Aren't you there, Mike? It's going to be a fun event, isn't it? It is, and I appreciate your guys' interest. I love the show. Todd, you're a good friend. I appreciate you helping me get the word out. Canna Jam is about uh, one thing and one thing in particular. It's about reducing the stigma of cannabis use in social situations. The recreational law passed in 2018. 
I still am not walking into places and having it and seeing you know restaurants that are open uh, alternative choice than uh, than than alcohol. Like there may be a, a deep well of single malt scotches, but I don't see any monkey paw or Pin County paralyzer as an option. <laughs> so it's going to be we're going to reduce the stigma one absolutely event at a time. Cannabis sales and consumption on site, folks. Canna Jam, Saturday, October 9th, 2021. Uh, brought to you by some great sponsors. You got Oz Cannabis, Sticky, uh, Pure Lapeer, and the Botanical uh, Company. Great, great sponsors, great comedians, music as well, and much more. So check it out, folks. CannaJamFest.com. Attorney Mike Camorn. Mike, real quick, Camorn Law. Great attorneys, Metro Detroit, all over the state. How can they reach you? Kamornlaw.com or call us at 248-357-2550. Mike Kamorn, yeah. Mike Kamorn, yeah. thank you so much, Mike, for taking the time. Guys, I appreciate it. I had a blast, as always. Absolutely. Craig, we got to go. Todd, the show is over. Let's get out of here. Let's get to Canada Jam October 9th next week, CanadaJamFest.com. We're not here for a long time. We're here for a smoking good time. Take us out, Craig. Dance with your daddy all night long. I'd like to hear some fun. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show, brought to you by Chad Malley Well Drilling of Rosebush, Clark Modular Homes, your most experienced and trusted builder in Mount Pleasant, and attorney Todd L. Levitt, not just a litigator, he's an advocator. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.